Hi, this is Mike. In this video, we're going to have a look at um, how we can connect BizTalk server to Power BI using the BizTalk um, REST capabilities. So, out of the box, um, BizTalk includes the, the ability to use the web HTTP adapter to, to make um, REST calls, and it also includes some um, JSON encoder and decoders. So, we can call most um, REST services quite effectively. However, when we want to consume um, certain REST services, we need to think about the security that's involved. And in the case of um, Power BI, we need to think about how we'd authenticate against Azure Active Directory to be able to um, make a call to Power BI. So, so I'm just going to drag in my um, my website here, and I'm going to show you that in my Power BI instance, um, I've got a data set here called IT spend analysis sample. Now what I'd like to do in this um, demo is with BizTalk server I'd like to be able to use the REST API for Power BI to be able to see which data sets my user has access to. So in order to do that um, the first thing I need to do is to be able to use the um, Power BI API I need to be able to access it from Active Directory. So I'm going to flip over to my AD tenant now and in my AD tenant, I've created a, a um, application which is a native application. So you can see native client application here. And I'm going to configure some access um, if you authenticate against this application to be able to access certain resources. So to begin with, um, the first setting I need to be aware of is my client ID, which I'll be using from inside my... Um, inside my um, my BizTalk adapter. The next thing is I've configured access to certain um, certain other applications here. So I've got access to the Power BI service and the Office 365 Unified API. And if I want to add an application here, you can see I can basically go on and just pick which applications that um, this user would have access to. And then after that, for the say the Power BI service here, I can have a look at um, which delegated permissions I'd like to give, so I can see things like see data sets, see dashboards, etc. Now, what I might choose to do is depend on which application you authenticate against. I may give you different permissions, but in the case of this demo, I'm just going to give access to all of these different permissions, and the one we're probably going to be using here is view all data sets. Now, to be able to um, to be able to access this from BizTalk, so the first thing I've done is I've um, created a WCF behavior here that's going to handle the um, security side of things. So I've got my appfx.bz.adapter behaviors Azure AD, and I've created an Azure AD security behavior, which is going to take care of um, getting the token from Azure AD and assigning an authorization header when we call the API. So this um, this component's going to take um, take advantage of the um, Adl NuGet package. So if you um, if we have a quick look at that, so you can see here the Azure Active Directory um, authentication library, and inside my behavior, I've got the before send request where I'm going to get access to the HTTP headers. And I'm going to use my token manager where the config for the behavior is going to pass in a client ID, a password, a resource ID, a username, and then I'm going to request the token using Adl. So inside my token manager here, you'll see I'm going to use the authentic uh, authentication context and the user credential. Now this scenario is usually referred to as the server to server scenario, so we don't have an interactive user session going on here. We're really inside a background process such as BizTalk that's going to have an adapter with the credential configured to be able to call that um, that service. So we're going to access the token and that's going to be flown back. And you can see here um, I've got configured um, the authority, which will be the, the Azure AD tenant, excuse me, and um, the redirect URI, which matches um, 
which matches my redirect URI here. So for just to keep things simple, um, I could make that a configurable value, but a lot of the time when you're using native um, native client applications, the documentation kind of recommends to just hard code that that particular value here. Um, so to keep you know to make it less things to configure, I'm going to just leave that and follow that pattern. So in the behavior element, we've got the information about the config. So you know which which um, config parameters people are going to pass in to configure this resource. So once I've um, once I've compiled this, um, I also need to strong name it. So I've strong named it, compiled it. I'd install this component to the GAC, and then I'd go and register it in the machine config as a behavior extension, just like you do for any other WCF behavior extension for BizTalk. Now, what I've got here is I've got a little um, BizTalk application called um, Acme Power BI BizTalk application. And um, going to be a very simple scenario here. So I'm going to have a receive location called the Power BI trigger file in. So I'm going to basically drop a file in, in a folder to trigger the process. I'm then going to have um, a send port called Power BI get data sets. And that's going to subscribe to the inbound message based on the receive port. And we're going to use the WCF Web HTTP adapter. If we bring up the, the config here, you can see I've specified the um, address for the Power BI API operation for getting your data sets. So we'll do a, a get operation against that URI. Now, the binding is pretty straightforward. There's nothing in there. Because it's SSL, we're going to have to set transport level security. Um, on the, um, the message itself, because we're going to be doing a get request, I'm going to use the feature down here to suppress the message body for a get. And then the key bit is on the behaviors. I'm now going to use my um, my AppFX AD behavior, Azure AD. So I could add that as an extension just in the normal way. And because I, you know, if I hadn't already added it, it would show up in this list. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify my client ID, which is, um, that's going to come from... Um, from the Azure AD portal, so that was the GUID that we showed before, so that's that GUID here. The resource ID is um, going to be the Power BI um, API's resource ID, so if I can just stretch that and show you what that looks like. Then I'm going to specify my credentials for Azure Active Directory and after we've done that, um, that, that's basically the config for the security. So to test this, I've got a couple of folders here. So we've got our out folder, which has nothing in it. I'm going to copy a file and drop it into the input folder. BizTalk's going to collect that file. And then a second or two later in the output folder, I'm going to have a scrap of JSON, which is going to be the um, the response from the Power BI's API, and that's going to show you that I have access to a data set called IT Spend Analysis Sample. And if we go back to the Power BI dashboard, you can see IT Spend Analysis Sample was the data set that I've got listed for my user. So what that means is that I can configure a um, in BizTalk, I can configure a service account which in Azure AD would have permission to certain resources within Power BI. And then I can configure my send port to be able to use that API and interact with, with various resources in Power BI. So you can see by using that um, WCF extension behavior, sorry, the WCF behavior extension, we could really easily use the, um, use the normal REST capabilities of BizTalk to consume services from the Power BI SaaS platform.